What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today, got a sweet list for you. Today we're gonna be talking about the best handguns under $750. <laughs> we just did a list under 350 and under 500. So if your gun's not on this list, your favorite's not on this list, all you have to do is go check those out. It might be on one of those. That being said, we really tried to narrow this down. I know there's an awful lot of great firearms under $750. So we had to put a lot of thought into this to try to come up with the 10 best under 750. And we also wanted a relatively diverse list. We just didn't want them all polymer frame striker fired nine millimeters. So we have some double action, some single action, and even some revolvers on this list. That way, it's good for everybody. Now, we also tested all of these firearms. This isn't some AI channel. These are my actual opinions. We didn't steal this footage. This is all our footage, and we test these guns. We have an actual opinion. So if you like that, make sure to go down and like, subscribe, and hit that notification button, because I keep hearing about how many people get unsubscribed every couple of weeks. So if you want to check out our videos, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. All these firearms on this list have full reviews on my channel, so if you wanna see more in detail about each one of these firearms, feel free to check those out as well. Before we get into the video though, we wanna mention my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys very much. We make content for you and not the industry, and we'd really appreciate it if you would go down there and subscribe to our Patreon. It's the best way to support the channel. Go down to the link in the description of each video, and it will be there. Also in that description is a link to a local shelter named Iowa. It's the YSS. Those kids can really use your help, so please go down there and donate to those kids. With that being said, let's get right into it with Number 10, the Beretta M9. Now, the Beretta M9 or 92 or 92 FS, whichever type of Beretta M9 you actually like, most of them come in for $750 or less. Uh, not my favorite versions, the M9A3 and the M9A4, but if you spend a little extra cash, those are definitely worth it. That being said, the Beretta M9 series or 92 series has been in production for a long time. I believe since 1982, and it has a warm reception in not only military, law enforcement, civilians, but also obviously in Hollywood, probably being the most filmed gun of all time. You can find this in any Jean-Claude Van Damme action movie that you're gonna find in the direct-to-DVD bin, and <laughs> any other action movie you might find as well, even up until modern day. Now, this was eventually eclipsed as the US military pistol uh, re very recently in the last five years by the SIG P320, but it doesn't change how awesome the M9 is or how awesome it looks. Classic Italian girl, it has great curves and it functions well also. With an MSRP of around $709, a 4.9 inch barrel, an aluminum frame, a double single action design, and an overall weight of 33 ounces. It has been a great do-it-all pistol for about the last 40 years, and it's gonna keep doing so. One of the original Wonder Nines with a very reliable track record, you can actually see that in the US military testing, but this gun has been carried by, again, law enforcement and military all over the world. It has an open top design, a little bit different than your standard Browning action. Some of them have a safety decocker, some of them just have a uh, decocker. It's really up to you, you can swap out either way. It has a great trigger and they're very safe for a Penix carry because of the double action trigger. Tons of accessories, tons of sights, optics ready models, models with rails, anything that you want. If you like the feel of the Beretta M9, you can find it. In at number nine, some German excellence. We're gonna be talking about the HK VP9. This is actually the VP9 SK. We're gonna have this video out in a few weeks. I haven't got my hands on one of these before, but I do have an awful lot of practice on not only the VP9, but the VP9B, which has the American mag release. And I also had a VP9 long slide, all of which I had a thousand rounds through. So the VP9 and I have met, we've acquainted, and we bumped uglies a few times. I really like the gun because it is modeled after the P99 from Walter and all those precock striker guns like the Canic, the VP9, the PDP, the PPQ, they all have excellent triggers, the VP9 being no exception. I can show you here. Has a great big trigger guard, and most of the models come with the paddle release, which is great for uh, lefties as well. You don't have to swap the mag re magazine release, it's already there. And even righties can use it if they want, or they can use their finger, whichever way you wanna use it, you can go with that. The VP9 has the cocking fins on it. It comes with great sights out of the factory, as you can see there. HD front with a blacked out rear, and it has one of the only guns to feature not only back straps, but grip panels on the outside, as far as polymer frame striker fired guns. I should mention that this is a polymer frame striker fired pistol. It's very light, 25 ounces, so pretty similar in weight to a Glock 19 or a Glock 17, and the full size does come with two 17 round magazines. Now, other features on the VP9 that I like a lot are gonna be the front serrations, the rail, and then it does come with a cold hammer forged barrel, which is added value, along with HK's general excellence 
balance, most of these guns are gonna be very reliable and accurate, and it's hard to find a company with more track record than H&K. Now, the MSRP on this is around 800 on the VP9, but I've seen them as low as 500 bucks, so definitely don't pay the MSRP. They are available for a lot less, and again, they make a great do-it-all gun, because you can get the VP9 SK, which is a small subcompact model. You can get the full size or the long slide version, and you can have a big gun, little gun, that takes the same mags, same compatibility as the Glock pistol, but with a better trigger, and I think it looks a little sexier as well. In at number eight, we're gonna have the first revolver on the list. Man, I love this gun. I've had it on a few other lists, but this is the awesome Ruger GP100. The one I have right here in front of you is going to be a satin model, stainless model, I'm not sure, but it does have seven shots of 357 Magnum with a four inch barrel and adjustable fiber optic sights, which is super great value considering I got this guy in the $650 to $700 mark being a very affordable, but very awesome revolver. want that guy. There we go. Revolvers are notoriously mechanically reliable as long as you do your part, you take care of them and you don't short stroke the trigger. And they work in close quarters and they work in conditions that sometimes semi-autos don't. So they definitely still have their benefits even today. Plus seven rounds of 357 Magnum has a habit of working on pretty much any intended target you need, which is awful nice. Loud, lots of recoil, lots of fun. The GP100 is a really good time. It also comes with this wood inlay grip with the rubber on the outside, which is one of the coolest uh, grips I've ever had because the rubber grips, for those who don't know, definitely hold uh, onto the gun better and you definitely uh, deal with recoil a little bit better with these. Also, if it's sweaty, if it's sweaty, if you're sweaty <laughs> or, or it's raining outside or something, the rubber grip allows you to hold onto it a lot better when you still have that cool looking wood grip in the middle there. If you need to, you can switch it to single action, although the double action trigger certainly isn't bad. And it is a very good tool to train on. If you're unfamiliar with revolvers, you can run that double action trigger. And if you're good at that, you're gonna be good at a single action, no problem. The GP100 is some of the best value for the money as far as revolvers go. You get a quality revolver that's been time tested, looks good, has a good capacity, and you don't skimp on any of the features, and you still come under that $700 mark. Very impressed with the GP100. In at number seven, a super awesome semi-automatic pistol. Another polymer frame striker fired Wonder 9. This is the Canic SFX Rival. Certainly one of the best guns for the money on the market and will compete in speed and accuracy with guns much more expensive than this. A lot of people shoot these in competition against TZ Shadow 2s, 2011 Sig Legions, and they do extremely well. Feel free to check out Nils Johansson's Instagram or any of his social media. He's a world champion shooter. He shoots for Canic and he makes this thing sing like a fucking trombone from hell. Like you can really shoot one of these. And again, that P99 uh, precock striker trigger, but on steroids. This one's even better than the VP9, and coming in at a gun that you can usually find for less gave it a better spot on this list. You can see here it's got a flat face trigger with that precock. Watch this. This is probably the best trigger I've ever had in a striker fired gun. Look at that break. Look at that reset. I mean, that is 2011 CZ Shadow quality, and coming out of a polymer frame pistol, that's good, but coming out of a polymer frame pistol with a price well under $750, being optic ready, coming with a fiber optic front, a blacked out rear. Many of them come with optics and holsters. You can have back straps with this, comes with great slide serrations, a full Picatinny rail, and two to three 18 or 20 round magazines, depending on which one you find. Makes this thing not only race ready, but it's good for carry, and it's good for competition, and you could use it for home defense as well a awesome do-it-all gun if you're looking for a long slide that won't cost you too much and you can show off in front of your friends and outshoot the shit out of them the canic rival is a great way to go in at number six one of my all-time favorite guns it is going to be the six hour p226 <laughs> now, if you guys haven't heard of the 226, it's been around the block a time or two, like your old girlfriend. It's been used by the Navy SEALs, 
tons of other special operations groups from the US military to NATO to law enforcement to civilian concealed carry owners. The 226 has a reputation of excellence. Not only is it one of, if not the most reliable pistol of all time, has some of the best track record when reliability testing, the gun literally works all the time, but it is extremely accurate as well. And it doesn't look too bad either. Sitting right in front of you here is going to be a Legion model. This is gonna be at more than 750, but the standard models come in well under $700. So be aware if you wanna spend a little extra, you get all this cool bling. But if you don't need that, you can get the standard pistol for less. This is gonna be a double single action aluminum frame gun. So it's gonna be an all metal gun. And if it doesn't work, you can hit them with it. <laughs> you ever seen Snatch? Nice, big, hefty gun that if you drop off a roof or something, it's not gonna break. Tons of torture testing on this is available on the internet, so feel free to check that out. You have that double action to protect your junk if you're carrying an appendix, and you can also switch it into single action if you want that awesome, crisp, three to four pound trigger. Great grips that are replaceable. The controls just happen to be in all the right places, and man, does she feel good, and she shoots quick. It's hard to go wrong with the 226. If you're looking for a do-it-all gun that has tons of history and a great look, the 226 is, again, an awesome way to go. In at number five, my boomstick. This is one of my favorite revolvers of all time. I featured it on several lists, and I'm gonna keep doing it because I freaking love this gun, and I think it's so underrated. You don't see this on a lot of people's lists because revolvers aren't in vogue anymore, but man, not very much gets the job done like a Smith & Wesson 686. This was one of my first revolvers I ever had myself, one of the first ones I ever bought for myself, and I am happy that I did. I have thousands of rounds through this gun now, and me and this old girl here can really sing together. I like the front sight on it. The full six inch barrel gives you a very long sight radius, makes even shots at 50 or 100 relatively easily. It comes with the high def front, which brings my old eyes right to the front sight so I don't focus on the rear. Adjustable rear sight so you can get your aim just where you want it. The cylinder release is very Smith & Wesson, which is the way to do it, Colt. <laughs> just kidding. I just really like Smith's uh, cylinder release. It just feels so natural to me. The gun itself has about a 45 ounce weight, making it heavy, but it controls the recoil of that 357 so well. And six shots at 357, again, can handle pretty much anything you need it to handle, anywhere from bears all the way down to pedophiles. Double single action trigger, like most revolvers, except the 686, comes in around $650 to $700, and it comes with a trigger that is really amazing. So I'll show you the double action trigger here. I usually stage it till about right there and pull and the single action trigger is awesome now keep in mind that this this has been broken in well over a thousand rounds yours might not be that good out of the box but it will definitely break in to be amazing requires a little cleaning a little maintenance by comparison to semi-auto like a glock but it's definitely worth it with that stainless look and it just looks freaking mean doesn't it <laughs> i'm just such a big fan with that full lug underneath and that rubber grip helps out with the recoil as well and allows you to shoot really fast if you're looking for your first revolver it's hard to go wrong with a smith and it's harder to go wrong with a smith and wesson 686 I know what you're telling me. That's too big of a gun and it has two little rounds for you. Don't worry, I've got something for you. This is the Six Hour P365 XL. Now this is the new Coyote version. That's the only one I have currently, but you're seeing a whole bunch of footage of the standard XL that you can get anywhere from five to $600. And it comes with all kinds of great features and a size to weight ratio that'll blow your mind. Comes with 12 round, 15 round, and 17 round mags if you need a lot of capacity. A 3.7 inch barrel for good penetration and good expansion on those hollow points. And the gun only weighs 20 ounces and it is only one inch thick, making it very light very capable, very carryable, and very lethal. The P365 XL is one of the most popular guns on the market today, and it's for good reason. It has a great trigger, good ergonomics, they're optics ready right out of the box. They can accept rail mounted lights like this TLR7 sub that we have on here. They have a very comfortable grip for most people, and again, a capacity of a Glock 19 or a Glock 17 for literally almost half the size. It's hard to believe today that we have these stack and a half guns that can get this small with this much capacity, 
city, but the SIG XL really does a good job because unlike the standard P365, the XL has a little bit longer barrel, a little bit more weight out front, so it has a little bit less recoil, not quite as snappy, and it's unbelievably shootable. You can shoot fast and accurate up close, and you can shoot at distances of 50 or 100 yards. Comes with great features, including HD night sights right out of the box, and if you pay a little extra, you can get the comped FDE model and be in the Cool Kids Club. In at number three, Another one of my absolute favorite guns. This is going to be the Smith & Wesson 5.7. My favorite 5.7 pistol, if you're aware of that caliber, it's pretty awesome. It's light recoiling, high capacity, very flat shooting out to 100 yards. Not a lot bad about it except for the price, but hey, when things are awesome, they're usually expensive as well. Look at my wife. Now I should say the ammo is expensive, not the gun. The gun comes in around six to $700, making it very affordable. However, the ammunition is usually around 50 cents to a dollar a shot because it is a mini rifle round after all. That 5.7 doesn't skimp on features, however. It comes with a threaded barrel, great sights, a dedicated optics mounting system to the 507K. So if you want the lowest optics mount and the thinnest optics mount possible, Smith is a good way to go for that. 5.7 pistols generally have a very narrow slide which even though they are a big gun they're very light and they're very thin so it actually is a good gun to carry if you're looking for a full-size gun that you can carry that only is 26 ounces and you have 22 plus one in the gun the Smith & Wesson is a good place to start also happens to come with their new flat face trigger which is really excellent you can see the reset on that very fast, very accurate. Magazines are stainless coated, so even after 2,000 rounds, they pop right out of the gun, no problem. Comes with great texture, slide serration, so you can run the front, and it happens to also come with the revolutionary Tempo barrel system. Now, that system didn't work that well on the 22 mag, but it does work awesome on the 5.7. Very, very low recoil, as low as a 22 long rifle, much lower than any 9mm, and even lower than other 5.7 pistols in its class. Light recoil, light gun overall, high capacity, amazing ergonomics. Really the only thing wrong with it is the price of ammunition, but if that doesn't bother you, one of the best pistols on the market, and you can get it for under 700 bucks. In at number two, one of my favorite guns of the year for sure, the Springfield Echelon got to be the twilight zone me putting a Springfield so high on a list but it is what it is and I try to be honest and whether I like the company or not I love this fucking gun the Springfield echelon is certainly the best polymer frame striker fired 9 millimeter come out in the last year and it might be the best one to come out in the last decade we did a full 2,000 round review on this where we abused this as much as humanly possible <laughs> <laughs> we we shot it in mud, sand, we drug it with my truck a quarter mile, we did 10 foot drop after 10 foot drop, and the damn thing just kept on ticking. Not only did it not lose zero, but it barely had any malfunctions. The only thing that managed to kill it was our mud test, and that mud was thicker than Jennifer Lopez in the 2000s. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's a fucking test. That is nasty and thick. I'm gonna stand back. Oh my god. All right, remember these days. No way. Into the mud it goes again. You know, we'll go the other side this time, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, go the other side. There we go. Got it all nice in the trigger group. There we go. Comes with a 17 round and a 20 round mag, has a fire control unit, tons of different variations available. MSRP is around 650, but you can find it for less. 24 ounce overall weight, very similar to the Glock 17. Polymer frame striker fired pistol, very similar to the Glock 17. It's basically like a 320, a PDP, and a Glock banged in the back of a car and you got the best of all three worlds. I really like how they did the serrations in there. They look simple, but with optics on the back of almost every gun these days, these are becoming more and more important. And they did it a little blocky, but a lot of times they cut right through the slide or they're so aggressive you don't want to grab a hold of them. And this is very, very grabbable. HD front sight, rail, tons of texture all the way across, back straps, and a beveled magwell. If you're looking for a Glock alternative, this is a really good way to go. Now, there won't be any honorable mentions for this video because we're gonna do an under 1,000 after this and we've already done 500 and 350, so I don't have room for honorable mentions, but there are plenty that I've missed out on. If you think I egregiously missed out on one, make sure to put it in the comment section below. I'd also love to see your list because if I miss out on some guns, I always wanna know what they are so I can give you the review of them later this year. So make sure to put your comments down below and I'll check them out. That being said, let's get into it with number one, the P365X Macro.
Now this is the larger brother to the P365 and it comes out with a gang of features that I really like. Comes with two 17 round magazines, a 3.1 inch barrel with an included compensator which really does reduce the recoil. This is SIG's new compensator, at least it was new at the time of this. This came out last year and instead of putting the comp into the barrel itself, they put it right in the slide so you don't reduce any reliability and you don't induce any issues that cutting in this into the barrel will. It doesn't reduce the recoil quite as much as a barreled comp, but it doesn't give you any negatives either, so I think that's a huge win. Again, SIG's classic X-ray night sights, the same mounting system for the optic that the Smith & Wesson had with the 507K or the EPS carry models. It has a rail on it, so you can put a TLR7 on it, good texture, and again, that full 17 round magazine and still only one inch wide and only 21 ounces in weight. The SIG P365 definitely has the best size to weight ratio. This is just slightly bigger than the XL and it does come with an included comp. So I think this is a great value for the money. And honestly, if you compare the specs to a Glock 17, it's not even close. This has a better trigger, it has better features. In my opinion, it has a better optic system because I love the dedicated optic system because you can get them super low. Especially with a thin carry gun, you'd want the optic as thin as possible as well. So I'm glad they went with a micro dot. You still get the rail for lights if you want, and you still get 17 round mags, but you get a gun that's four ounces less, shoots all the same, because it has a comp and a better trigger, and you still get the same magazine capacity for a shitload less gun. I really like this gun, it's one of my favorite guns of all time, and I think if you're trying to find one do-it-all gun, if you're looking for a carry gun that you can also defend your house with, that you can shoot on the range with for fun, you can compete with, you can do whatever you want with a handgun, I think the SIG P365 X Macro is the best way to go for that. That's why I put it at number one. I hope you like my list, I hope you like these choices. I tried to put something in for everybody, and hopefully you can find the gun that fits you the best. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters, and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. Hey babe, is that a revolver in your pocket or are you just excited to see me? It's a revolver. So now I'm gonna try to shoot the back ones without shooting the front ones. So I only have about half a plate view at about 10 yards and they're six inch plates. So it's not a lot to hit with a very little gun. Sounds fun. Oh no! Wah, wah.